What's up guys, my name is ESO and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I'm going to perk my character at quite an early stage in the game. Our main level is only level 6 and we're starting to unlock some interesting perks now so I think it's worth me making this video just to talk about some of the options and some things you may want to consider. Now the first thing I quickly want to show you with each one of these uh, skills if you didn't realize guys if you go onto the skill and press more info, and then you scroll down, it says at the bottom here, you get a strength perk point to spend each other level up. So every two levels in strength, you get another strength perk point. But if we look at agility, you actually get an agility perk point every four levels up. So it's worth looking at this and just carefully considering what you want to invest your perk points in and if you want to save them or not. And that's also what I'm going to be talking about in this video. So let's just start off with strength. I'm going to click show more. And as you can see, there are some different perks here. And again, if we go why, we can actually read what these perks do and decide if we want to buy them. Right now, my strength is level six and I have obviously three perk points. So I'm going to go to the Gravedigger one. This, in my opinion, really isn't worth spending a perk point on, at least not now until we max out our character. Carrying dead or unconscious bodies won't cost you any stamina. They will burden you only half as much. To be honest, there are much more useful perks here we can get, so I'm going to ignore this. Stronghold. Blocking an opponent's blows will cost you 30% less stamina. This is so good, especially if you're planning on taking on a few enemies at once or even going into the combat arena. Pretty much any combat whatsoever, this is going to be super helpful. Because if you can block a few blows until your opponent depletes their stamina, it's even easier to damage them when you start attacking back. So we're definitely going to be learning this perk right now. The next one here is Clinch Master. Gives you one third higher chance of overpowering your opponent in a clinch. Now a clinch is basically when you get too close to your opponent, uh, either in a fist fight or fighting them with a sword, and then you have a higher chance of being able to push them back. This can be extremely useful sometimes, but right now, I'm not going to use it simply because I don't think it's going to be that helpful. To the next perk here is Mule. You can carry 15 pounds more. To me, I think this is invaluable. Carrying 15 pounds more is so useful. There's so many times where I've just run out of carry weight in this game when I wanted to loot more corpses and sell off the stuff, or even when I'm going out thieving. So I'm definitely going to be getting the Mule perk. So next up we have Ball. You can deplete an opponent's stamina and health by bumping into him at a sprint. The effect is increased if your armor is heavier than his. This is actually a very useful skill, but right now, early on in the game, it's not as good, simply because the skill gets better with the heavier armor you wear. So if you're wearing heavy armor, you bump into someone who's lightly armored, you reduce all their stamina, and then you get your sword out and just start stabbing them. You know, they can't really do anything to defend themselves because they're so low on stamina. This is also a really useful thing in tournaments because if you're in full plate armor, you just run into your opponent, like tackle them almost, and then start attacking them. And you know, it's such an easy way to deplete their stamina. One thing where it's not so useful is in the harder tournaments when you're against people in full plate armor, you really can't use this as an advantage it will deplete their stamina slightly, but not that much. But right now, we're going to not get it, but it's definitely a useful perk. Uh, and I want to do some more experiments with this one too. The next one is Tight Grip. Your stamina regeneration will not slow down in combat, even on the weapon back backswing. This is so useful, once again, for the same reason that we got the Stronghold perk, we're definitely gonna to want to get this one. Having a constant stamina regeneration is super useful. We've now spent all our perk points and these are the only ones up to level 6 strength we can get. The next one is Headcracker and that's level 8 strength. And I'm going to do another video talking about this as we level up our character. Because some of these are actually really cool. But for now we are done with the strength category. I've spoken about those. We're going to go and have a look at the agility one. This is interesting, okay. So we've already got the Dodger which lets us jump aside during combat. Now you actually get taught this in the main quest line. So if you do the main quest, sometimes characters will teach you perks, and that's the best way to get these perks. Featherweight, falling will cause you 30% less injury. It's quite useful, there's been some times where I've annoyingly took a lot of damage from falling, but um, it's not really that useful for me to spend a perk point on, especially considering 
we only get one perk point every time we level up our agility. So instead, we're gonna save our perk point for later and I'm not gonna get any perks in the agility skill tree yet. There are some other interesting ones here, but I just wanna show you guys, for example, depending how you wanna play your character, the light, the light armor skill actually makes it 50% easier for you to dodge during combat. And dodging is quite a risky thing anyway. Uh, there's also fast strike, which again is a pretty good perk as well. But right now, I'm not going to invest in the agility skill tree. Now we're going to look at the vitality one. As you guys can see, you get a vitality perk point every third level up. So we've got the Marathon Man and the Sprinter. These are two perks, but you cannot have them at the same time. Marathon Man actually makes you 20% slower while you're sprinting, but it demands 20% less stamina so you can sprint for longer. Sprinter does the opposite thing, so it makes you sprint 20% faster, but you drain your stamina 20% faster. Personally, I'm not gonna get either one of these because I don't wanna waste a perk point, and I like just having an average speed and an average stamina reduction while sprinting. Another one is Thick Blood, which makes you bleed slower. Personally, I've not really had too many issues with bleeding right now in the game, so I'm not going to get this either. If you actually look in the Vitality skill tree, as you get towards the bottom of the skill tree, there are loads of perks in it. The perks are insane. For example, Berserk, which is one of my favorite ones. As soon as your health falls below a minimum, you go Berserk and your stamina regenerates four times faster. That's insane. That's gonna make you like kind of invincible because your stamina acts like a buffer to your health, almost like a little shield you get. And um, there's also some other really cool ones like Blood Rush. After beating your first opponent, you get 50% attack bonus and your stamina will regenerate one quarter faster. I am gonna save all of my vitality points for the perks later in the game. And I suggest you do the same because they're so good. The next one we're going to look at, which is really interesting, is our speech skill. My speech is level 6, as you guys can see. So, the speech skill levels up every 4th level. So again, it's quite hard to get perks in this. If we look at these, though, there are quite a few different perks for speech. We've got final offer. I don't think this is worth it. When a trader loses patience with you drawing a haggle, you get one last chance to make the final offer. To be honest, all they do is exit the trade, and then you can retrade with them anyway. So... Apart from wasting a bit of your time, it's not really worth spending a perk point on this, in my opinion. Highborn and Lowborn. Again, these are opposite perks. You cannot have both at the same time. And I think which one you choose will depend on what kind of character you're playing. Usually, Highborns have a high speech skill anyway. This one will increase the speech level by plus three when talking to nobles and wealthy people. You can't have this and the Lowborn perk simultaneously. And obviously, the lowborn will give you plus three speech when speaking to lowborn people. Now, highborn is really good because it helps you pass those speech checks when talking to nobles and your betters, and also people who are wealthy, so like shopkeepers that you want to sell your items to and get a good deal with. That can be really useful sometimes, but because my type of character, and you're going to want to think about this too, guys, my character usually steals a lot of stuff and then sells it to fences. And the fences in this game are lowborn. And this is how my character is going to be making money and how I want him to kind of act in this game. So I'm going to actually go for the lowborn one because it means I can make more money when selling to fences. And also, it means I can talk to guards and other people like that and try and skip my bounty when someone tries to arrest me. Or even if a bandit tries to attack me and I'm in a bad position and I can use my speech skill there. Or if I'm even disguised and I want to try and get past some bandits or something. Lots, I feel like Lowborn is going to help my character out a lot more. But after my first playthrough, I will let you guys know how that went. And if I do a diplomat playthrough where I don't kill anyone, i definitely go with Highborn. But you know, that's um, just my opinion on it. So now we're going to go over main level, and I left this one out. Um, we'll go over combat and skills in a moment. But the main level is an interesting one simply because it, as your character levels up, every other level you get a perk. I've already got first aid, which enables us to use bandages. There are other things here, and most of the perks, especially near the start, have a positive effect and a negative effect. So, for example, this one here, you'll last 30% longer without food, but if you get hungry, your effects will be 20% more worse. Personally, I don't really think I need this perk. This one, Manly Odor, if you're playing a diplomat, this is insane. If you're sneaking around, however, this is terrible. Let me read this to you. 
You have 50% more charisma when talking to women, great. However, people will smell you from a mile off, reducing your stealth skill by 30%. There is no way you want this if you're planning on sneaking. That's going to be so detrimental. And then we have Night Rider. Your stamina will regenerate 20% faster at night, but 10% slower during the day. Obviously, the trade-off is better for you, but still, I kind of like walking around at daytime as well, so I don't want that. Scout. Slightly increases the sight distance for fast travel and also gives you a 10% more chance while evading. Personally, I don't think that's an issue. I'm not going to get it. And then we have the Wanderer. This is an interesting one because it actually means that you sleep better the worse the bed is. And you sleep worse the better the bed is. Uh, I actually might consider getting this one just because I will be sleeping on a few crappy beds now and again. And, you know, getting a free bed in the wilderness is actually a lot more effective than having to pay for an inn to get a good night's sleep. But right now, I'm not going to bother with it. Insomantic. Increase the time you can do without sleep. Your energy levels fall one quarter more slowly. This is another really good one. And I mean, there's no drawback of having this. So I might actually get this one right now. And then we have Renegade Brand. Penalties on stats following release from jail are 20% lower. This is a very good one for a sneaky class again, but I'm not going to get it yet. We also have Burglar. In towns and villages and their immediate vicinity, you have plus one bonus on strength and agility and vitality and speech. And then over here, you have the Savage Perk which does the exact same thing. It gives you a buff to everything, but in the wilderness instead. Personally, I can't decide which one of these I want right now. Even though my character is a sneaky burglar type, I still spend a lot of time in the wilderness and both of these buffs are kind of nice. So I'm gonna decide later, I think, which one I want to get. First aid two, bandages are 25% more effective. You can also apply your healing skill in dialogues. This is very useful because there are a few quests where you actually get the ability to look at someone's wound and it can open a few new dialogue options if you're successful. So having this can be quite useful for those speech options, like if you're playing a diplomat or even if you're playing a rogue. And then obviously beyond that, we have skills we cannot actually get. Now let's have a quick look at combat. Defense is a very interesting um, one because there are a few things here like perfect block that we were already taught in the combat arena. My favourite perk here is Firm Grip. Blocking your opponent's strikes with your shield will cost him 15% more stamina. For the reasons I mentioned previously when talking about the other skills, this is fantastic because it means then when you attack back, they're a lot easier to, you know, get through their block basically. So I'm definitely going to be getting Firm Grip. Weapon Cruncher was the other one I could have got. If you beat your opponent with a clinch, you'll damage his weapon 15% more. A damaged weapon will cause less damage and its price will be greatly reduced. To be honest, this isn't that good because if you are damaging their weapon and if you want to kill them and loot their weapon, then it's going to be worth less money to you. So it's not really that good, though it makes them do less damage to you. But to be honest, if you're blocking anyway, this shouldn't be a problem and you should be blocking. So I don't think this is that great. Golem, uh, they have some very good perks later on, but I won't talk about them in this video. The next one we have a perk point for is sword and all of these if you guys look are actually combos every skill in here is a combo some of these combos are really good but i've not had a chance to probably test them yet so i can't really tell you this one is the best i recommend doing this and also it depends if you want to be doing all these combos obviously the free combos are a lot easier to do some of these combos are really good and they all have separate animations for them so i definitely recommend looking at that and deciding for yourself which ones you want to test out personally i've got to test those a bit more so i'm not going to look at that right now uh the skills this really depends on how your character is and how far you are on the game there are lots of different skills currently i have a perk point to spend in hunting now one of the interesting things here if you guys have been hunting yet you'll notice when you kill the enemies or well, like when you kill the deer or rabbits or whatnot you can only harvest their meat you can't harvest anything else having these perks or at least some of them allows you to harvest their antlers their tusks and the one that i'm saving up for here is the tanner you are able to harvest skin from dead animals because there are actually some tanners around the game and some other people actually where you can sell them antlers tusks and hides um, and get some money out of it so i recommend saving up for the tanner which is what i'm going to be doing uh, you can also sell like 
antlers and tusks to people for quite a lot of money as well. So that's a good way of making money. These are all kind of like good money making skills, really. But that is my character so far, guys. And as we go through this Let's Play that I'm recording, there's a link to the Let's Play in the description, by the guys, if you're not watching it. But as we go through, I'm going to level up my character depending on what I plan to be doing in the Let's Play. And what you might be doing might be very different. But I will be doing some different character builds. This is kind of like a sneaky character I'm building right now. Um, I want to make some other characters later on where it's just like, this is going to be my build for a diplomat level character. And I'll go through which skills in what order I'm, I would get. And then you guys can maybe try and play the game that way as well. Um, it's really up to you, but you know, most of these perk points are quite straightforward. Some people seemed a bit confused because they didn't know how to skin animals, and I don't think they realized this perk tree even exists, so I thought it would be good to make a separate video about it. But please do subscribe and also press that little bell icon as well, and then YouTube will notify you when I release new Kingdom Come Deliverance guides. If there's anything you want a tutorial on or a video on for me to explain, then please just click the link in the description, check out my other guides. Or if I haven't done a guide on it yet, leave a comment and I'll get round to it as soon as I can. I'm doing daily videos, working really hard. You know, when I'm not doing a daily Let's Play video, I'm also doing an extra video with the tutorial in. Uh, it takes a long time to edit these very long videos. And when I'm not working on my computer, it's just sitting there rendering the video. So, you know, it's a really intensive time for me. I hope you guys can appreciate that. But uh, thanks very much for watching. Thanks for all your support on Patreon, by the way, guys. It's always really appreciated, those of you who are on there. Uh, and I will see you guys in the next video. Have a fantastic day and goodbye.